Okay, scholars, let's begin reading chapter seven together. I have my thinking jobs here. I wrote that the story is fiction, and I wrote my five thinking jobs that I'll be keeping in mind as I read. Character, motivation, problem, solution, and lesson learned. I'm gonna keep this right here. If you do not have this written down yet, pause this video, have it written down somewhere close to you, and then press play to begin reading. Okay, I'm looking here at this picture. It looks like Clementine is grabbing onto her throat and there's books and a lunch bag on the floor. And her mom, how does her mom look? Does she look like she's worried? She looks like she's kind of like annoyed at Margaret, like, hmm. So I wonder what was going on there. I guess we'll find out. I knew Friday was going to be a bad day right from the beginning because there were clear parts in my eggs. I can't eat clear eggs. I can't eat eggs if they have clear parts, I reminded my mother. Eat around them, she said. Just eat the yellow parts and the white parts. But I couldn't because the clear parts had touched the yellow parts and the white parts. So all I had was toast. Have you got all your stuff? My dad asked as I was leaving. Of course, I said, right in my backpack. But when I went to show him my homework, three sentences about the pla planet Saturn, which I had decorated with a picture of some squirrels I'd seen in the park, it wasn't there. Better go check the black hole, he said. I gave my dad a, that's not funny look. But I went back into my room to check. The black hole is what my dad calls the place under my bed. He says things mysteriously disappear there. I do think fathers should be comedians. My homework paper was not under my bed and the rest of the day got worse. On the bus, Margaret walked right past our usual seat and sat down next to Amanda Lee, even though all Amanda Lee can talk about is going to the mall, which is boring. Plus, anyone with a name as beautiful as Amanda Lee probably made it up. Then, as soon as I got to school, the teacher said, the following students are excused from recess so they can catch up on their journal writing and I was one of the following students. Three times during journal writing, the teacher said, Clementine, you need to pay attention. And every time he said it, I was paying attention. I was paying attention out the window where the fourth graders were playing pickle in the middle. Whenever the ball came anywhere near Margaret and Amanda Lee, they grabbed each other and shrieked like they were being murdered, which everyone knows means we are best friends. When my teacher moved my seat away from the window, I was G-L-A-D, glad. And I wrote all over my journal page, I don't care. So hard my pencil broke. Ooh, she looks furious by the looks of her handwriting there. When I got home from school, I was planning on going straight to my room to draw a picture of me with my new best friend. But my dad was putting on his raincoat and it was not raining out. Fighting pigeons is not for the weak hearted, he said. It takes superhuman courage and resourcefulness and cleverness. When my dad talks like that, it means he has a new idea. You have another battle plan? I asked. Yep, he answered, and it's a doozy. I'll probably be promoted to general for this one. You already are the general, remember? Oh, right. I'm so modest I sometimes forget. Well, I bet I get the Medal of Honor. Dad? I might even be knighted for this one. Dad? I said. Sometimes my dad needs help staying serious. So what is the new battle plan? 
My dad looked around like he thought there might be spies sneaking up on us. Then he bent over and whispered in my ear, psychological warfare. This sounded like a good one. So I followed him out and sat on the steps to watch. I could do that drawing later. First, my dad hosed off the sidewalk, then sprayed the pigeons until they flew away. All the time he was muttering things like, oh, they're crafty all right, but I'm craftier. And it's a little known fact that pigeons were the eighth deadliest plague to visit Europe, Egypt. Sorry, not Europe, Egypt. Then he pulled a brown plastic owl from a bag. He got a ladder and climbed up and put the owl right on top of the lion's head over the lobby door. I asked him what that was for. The pigeons will take one look at the owl and then they'll head for the hills. Well, for another building, pigeons are deathly afraid of owls. Yep, I'll probably be knighted. It's plastic, I reminded him, but the pigeons don't know that. That's the brilliance of my plan. I didn't see what was so brilliant. I didn't see how a little plastic owl was going to frighten off a flock of pigeons who fought over who would get to sit on the head of the roaring lion. And while we stood there, dad admiring his brilliant battle plan and me worrying about it, the pigeons came back. They settled on the regular perches all over the front of our building, except for a few who decided to sit on the owl's head. What my dad needed was something real. Polka Dottie would have scared them off. Dad put my, the ladder and his raincoat away and came over and sat beside me. You still miss her, don't you, sport? <laughs>